happened in such a short time, it is extremely hard to catch your breath, extremely hard to make good decisions, extremely hard to be able to plan for the future. And yet that is exactly what we have to do this evening. We pray for your wisdom to be a part of our wisdom. We pray that we will keep in mind that we are elected delegates of the citizens of Salado and the ETJ. We ask that you be with our people who are sick, as well as Bell County, as well as Texas, and all the other states in our union. And may we have a recovery that beats all recovery. It's 630. I ask now that you be in our midst. In your name I pray. Amen. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To America. the Republic. And one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice. Let me say just a couple of things here to kind of get us rolling. Number one is there are 16 participants who are watching this or part of this, just to let you know that. If you want to call in, you'll have that opportunity, not right now, because we're going to go into the zoning board business. But if you'd like to call in, you have the telephone numbers, I'm sure. I'll give you one of them just in case you don't. That's 253-215-8782. I repeat, 253-215. One five eight seven eight two. You'll be given the opportunity to express whatever you need to express. I want to remind you before we get into the uh, citizens' comments. There are only three minutes. Even if we're on, um, even if we're on video, we will stop that. We'll stop at the end of three minutes, and we will not respond to anything that you have to say. We will not. So understand the comments are welcomed, but we're not going to respond and we will not answer any questions. Let us go to the first order of business. It's going to be the zoning board of adjustment. I'll read it to you as it is printed in our plans. Discuss and consider action regarding an appeal of the interpretation of the village administrator regarding requirements relating to the side yard setback on property located at 477 Thomas Arnold Road in Salado, Bell County, Texas. Don? Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, members of the board, uh, members of the public, uh, this is a item that the Board of Adjustment uh, will be considering tonight. As you know, in our city, the Board of Adjustment consists of members of the Board of Aldermen. Uh, some cities it's separate in this situation. Our Board of Aldermen uh, wear two hats in this situation. In this particular case, uh, we have received an appeal of the interpretation of myself, the, the village administrator, regarding the setback issue for a property located at 477 Thomas Arnold. Uh, specifically, the appellant in this case, John Burrow with uh, Sabre 6 Commercial Properties, LLC, 
has submitted a site development plan recently for a mixed-use commercial development. Uh, included in the plans is a 24-foot wide driveway that runs the length of the property. It's about five feet off the east property line of the property. Uh, the driveway is located within the required 15-foot side yard setback. In addition, the plan shows portions of a handful of parking spaces located within the 15-foot setback on the west side of the property. The Village of Salado zoning ordinance does not specifically define the term setback or specifically detail what is and what is not allowed within a side yard setback. It talks about the fact that buildings may not be located in the setback, uh, but it's, it's really not specific like some cities have in their ordinances uh, that, that define the term setback, what is allowed in the setback, and what isn't allowed, be it driveways, be it appurtenances, those type of things. We do have a few references in our code that specifically call out things that aren't allowed. For example, for, for home businesses, you're not allowed to park uh, in the front setbacks of the property. Uh, you know, for obviously we mentioned buildings, uh, but, but it's not as comprehensive as you typically see. Our position, our interpretation of the code is if it's not specific as to defining exactly what is and is not allowed, then we, we interpret that, that definition uh, literally as being a setback, a clear area. Uh, there's no question that uh, the horizontal construction probably not as far as the building or things along those lines. Uh, Mr. Burroughs, we talked to you about this particular situation, and he has two options. He, he can he can apply for a variance if he's going to you know follow the, follow our interpretation and, and go to the board of adjustments to get a variance, um, and or he has the ability as we we advise him to get bigger out uh, our interpretation of, of the code, and uh, he's chosen to do that and. Uh, that is perfectly his right, and it's perfectly fine. We're not perfect. We make errors all the time. And uh, and, and if the board sees that we've got an interpretation uh, you know, that you don't feel uh, is, is an accurate interpretation uh, based on uh, Mr. Burroughs' arguments, then that's fine. You, you overturn it, and, and he moves forward from that standpoint. Our position from an interpretation standpoint is setbacks can get pretty weird uh, as, far as, as far as impact on, on neighboring properties and things along those lines. In this particular situation, Mr. Burroughs has the support of neighbors on both sides where he has the potential encroachments in the setback. And, and those individuals have indicated they don't have an issue with what it is he's planning to do. Uh, the concern we have is this, and that is uh, <clears throat> without the code being very specific, uh, we have the concern of the interpretation that if there's no particular uh, disallowance of, of items in the setback, then that means the purpose of the setback is somewhat defeated. Uh, in, in the standpoint that it's intended to provide a clear area for emergency access and then to provide a buffer as far as separations between properties. We have a number of situations in this community as this community has developed over the years where there has been development in the setback. There's no question about that. And John and I have talked about that. Um, you know, was that the right interpretation at that time or not? In this particular administration's interpretation, we feel the lack of a clear definition of a setback uh, per se, the actual what is allowed and what isn't allowed in, in a comprehensive fashion. Uh, our, our feeling is that it's a conservative definition that's intended to try to protect people's property um, on either side of the issue. So that said, John's here tonight, and, and John has the has the opportunity to present his case and present his position. You've received his briefings, his support uh, correspondence from that, and, and at this stage of the game, I'd like to introduce you. This is a fine man, John Burroughs, and, and he'd like to talk to you about why he feels our interpretation may be the wrong interpretation. Hey, Don, I appreciate it, and, and thanks for the opportunity tonight. Uh, I totally agree, Don, with, uh, with your assessment uh, that the setback needs to be redefined, I think, in the ordinance, or at least clearly defined in the ordinance. Uh, with that being said, though, I think, excuse me? I thought I heard somebody. Uh, with that, uh, I think there's enough in the ordinance that does allow uh, for the situation that we have, that we've designed for. Uh, currently, uh, the ordinance, I don't know if you all had, I think Don provided you all a package that showed uh, both uh, the letter and also uh, the site development. And I have it behind me. I'm not sure how well you all could see that, but if there's any questions that you have with that, I can clarify with that. But based on what I've read and what we've interpreted uh, in the current ordinance, I feel like the design that we have here does meet the city of Salado. Uh, setbacks for for side yards and front yards, and part of that is is that it's 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 not defined in that it doesn't specifically tell you uh, specific buildings or structures, but it does define something I do believe that is really important in this argument, and that is the difference between horizontal construction and vertical construction. If we go into 
uh, the section that is under question, we are currently in the commercial district, and the minimum side yards uh, between commercial property lines is 15 feet, as well as 25 feet adjacent to any public or residential lot. Our building design currently has a 25 setback to the adjacent residential lots located on the west property line, as well as it has a 50-foot setback, approximately 50-foot setback, adjacent to the commercial property line. The rear yard that we have as part of this development requires a 25-foot setback, and our design does uh, include that as well. Uh, if we go into now, the question is, is what is a yard defined as? Well, a yard, based off the, the city ordinance, is defined as an open space at grade, which grade is determined as ground, grade, existing grade, uh, between a building and the adjoining lot lines, unaccompanied and unobstructed by any portion of a structure from the ground upwards. That, to me, to me that definition specifically states vertical construction. Any obstructions are not allowed with vertical construction. And my argument is, is pavements and driveways are horizontal construction. And as uh, Don had indicated, the, the, the reason for setbacks really are for public safety, uh, to allow emergency vehicles uh, into an area without any obstructions. I would also argue with our design, we're actually enhancing that public safety by providing a 24-foot fire lane uh, that would provide access up to uh, the development that uh, the, the facility that we're building, as well as keeping the setbacks off of the backyard and the and the uh, side yard as well. So, with that, I think there's two uh, things that I would like to see come out of this. Is one, obviously, I feel that our design uh, it meets the current city ordinances uh, for setbacks and, and yards. Uh, as well as I think what we need to, so this doesn't happen again, is that we need to look at the city ordinances and maybe try to clarify uh, and try to maybe quantify them a little bit better than how they're written now. So pending any of your questions, I think, you, Mayor, you said I only had about three minutes. I'm not hey, sure if that pertains to me hey. or not. Well, it does not, John. You can speak as long as you want, and then I'll open the floor to questions to you from the Okay. Okay. Um, I think that if you all had, uh, as far as the, the, the uh, information provided to you, I'm, I'm open to questions. Uh, but again, I think the, the real uh, issue is whether or not the setback allows for horizontal versus vertical construction. And I think the definition to me uh, how it's written currently is here, it, it really is stating vertical construction. But it could be clarified by rewriting that to say vertical construction versus horizontal construction. And again, the setbacks, the purpose of them is to allow the city to provide uh, emergency access to facilities as well as you just don't want uh, to crowd facilities uh, up against one another uh, for many, many different reasons. Uh, I also have talked to Johnny's on the on the west side of our property line. I've talked to Johnny himself, and I let him review the plans. He has no issues with that fire access uh, drive that's shown, as well as uh, Kevin Carpenter, who's on a, a resident uh, off of, I believe that is clear, or is it Salado Creek Road? He's on the west side, and, and our parking adjoins his uh, property line. He's seen the plans. Uh, he does not object to any of it. So pending your questions. Yeah, sir, this is Alderman Cole. I have a couple of questions for you. So just to recap, you, you touched base with Johnny on the east side and also the two residences on the west side, and they all concur. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's look back to the north, and I think we see Thomas Arnold schools in that area. Is that correct? Right. The, the, there's a also though you got to think between the school uh, and where we're developing as Caris Dental and Solomon Dental. That's on the right, property yeah. that we parked. Okay. Yeah. School. And I get all that. So you don't foresee any impact to school bus operations or any kind of traffic congestion that would affect the school. No, sir. At this time, I do not. 
Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Other questions, please. Mr. Burrow, the, the question that, that I have is that uh, we're really just talking about where your entrance into your addition is going to be at that 15-foot road. It's not uh, anywhere else except right up there on the east side of your lot, right next to Johnny's. So it's really just putting in a road, 15 feet. Of, a of, private uh, access. A private access, access, going back to your place. So that's that's the whole question. About and also, this, Mike. Mike, also, it's, it's, excuse me, it's, Al, it's Alderman Coggins. Oh, Alderman Coggins. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, also, the parking located right here uh, next to the, on the west side of the property, this is the Carpenter house here. Right. And uh, we have parking right here. There's about four spaces that would be within that 15 foot. Okay, thank you. So I have a question. Um, as far as, uh, Don, if he were to not pave this and that access was just a dirt access back and forth to his property, there would be no no problem, correct? It's just the fact that he's adding pavement to it, so horizontal. No, the, the, the interp our interpretation, and again, right or wrong, our interpretation is the fact that, you know, that, that there's, you typically have limitations and setbacks in, in and that includes whether it's paved or whether it's not paved. If it's a dirt, if it's a dirt road, and it's kind of like allowing vehicles to park right up to next to a property line. Don't so have that type of thing. I mean, so whether it's paved or not really is not the issue as much as it, it's in use in the setback. And our position from a staff standpoint is setback are supposed to be clear zones. Would this um, property be buildable, um, John? If if you had to push that um that part that roadway um to meet that standard would you be able to meet the number of parking places and still be able to put the facilities um on there as you know as, as you've currently got it designed no ma'am and i think that uh it would impact i think really what we're all getting at is public safety allowing uh, public safety access up to the building it would eliminate that fire lane essentially we're putting in a 24 inch fire lane as a private drive. We, we told John, when we talked about this, I, I think he meets the criteria. He meets the definition of a hardship or a variance, if that's the route you go. There's no question in my mind. He's got some key points, as he pointed out, from the standpoint of logistics of, of, of positioning and, and vehicle access. So I think if, if he were to go the variance route, I think there, there's clearly a hardship argument that he has that can be I, I agree. Um, to me, um, it, it does seem like you're correct as far as horizontal versus vertical construction. It seems like the intent of the original ordinance was to inhibit vertical construction impeding. Um, that's just what I read through it, but I can see how it will be interpreted. It could be interpreted either way. But if I were to have read it, I would have interpreted it um, the way that John is of it being a vertical barrier. But, I mean, I can see both ways. I, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead John. John. Yeah, I have one question for you, Don Fergus. Don, this is Cole. Um, so he's all set to hook up to the wastewater system too, right? Oh, yeah, his property's already connected. Okay, good deal. Thank you. Yes, sir. He, as a matter of fact, I will say this about John. The first time John and I met him was over what it was going to take to get him to connect it as fast as possible. To yeah. you see the model on that. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. So, so using using the criteria of vertical, if if he built the driveway an inch below what is the current grade there it wouldn't be a vertical impediment therefore it wouldn't fall in the rule of the setbacks because he's not going upwards he's going he'd be going downward that that's his argument that's exactly our argument the other thing is saying that they drive on the setback i'm, I'm thinking of my house here where i have a circle driveway that comes in 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 the in the root in the spirit of the law that you just read to us, my driveway is in the setbacks. 
Driveways aren't driveways are step back and driveways are allowed in the front step back. And that's because you legally by law cannot restrict someone's access. So that's that's why you see front driveways are not an issue. Typically the side driveways that run the property length uh, that can potentially cause issues. But the front driveways, you're exactly right. They're they're allowed. You can that, that all falls into the provision of restricting that kind of property. Well, how else would he um, access his property since there's a building in front of it? You know, I mean, this, it seems like a front driveway, the way the building is, you know, the property is. I mean, there, he'd have to play with the width of the driveway potentially, you know, <laughs> and he's doing the right thing by trying to provide as much of a wide access to allow for two-way access as possible. Uh, but he could, he could potentially address it with, looking at the width, potentially tweaking the building location back a little bit. Uh, it's, tight. it's a very tight situation he's dealing with. A lot's kind of narrow. A lot of yeah. also. Don, I would also state that the ordinance requires a 24-foot fire lane. And that's, I mean, that's, that's key. So it not only does it provide two-way access, which is desirable, the main reason is to allow emergency vehicles. So, again, uh, even the definition within the ordinance is, about a parking your definition about parking is off street ground level is is the definition for parking even so at ground level and again a yard if you read it it's obstruct unobstructed by any portion of a structure from the ground up so i i think the wording could have been done differently uh, I can tell you what other, and I know other cities don't, I mean, Salado is Salado and other cities, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but other cities actually even allow accessory buildings in their offsets, uh, for storage, storage, like in a house or in a building, you needed a storage shed. They're, they allow you to put a storage shed because it's not a permanent structure. You don't want to impede, um, emergency vehicles with any permanent type of structure. Again, I think with what we're doing, we're actually, if you look at public safety, uh, we're actually enhancing the ability to allow uh, for uh, proper public uh, access and safety up into that area. Um, I think that uh, if we built the facility and we let them drive just on natural grade, I mean, I don't think a fire truck, uh, it would be good for a fire truck in a wet situation would probably get stuck back there. So I think that, uh, uh, in my opinion, again, uh, based off of what I interpret as the in the ordinances, I think uh, it's it's clear. Uh, I think it could be clear, but I think it's clear and we meet the uh, definition of uh, setbacks and yards within the current city ordinance. And that's that's one reason I didn't I didn't want to go to uh, look for a waiver because I, I feel like we we are meeting the intent of the of the ordinance. Any other questions for, to John? I'll entertain a motion, please. Motion to approve. Just for a second. What are we approving? Yeah. The approving is a field, basically. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion, please. I'm just this. clarifying. So this is approving um, Mr. Burroughs' appeal, which makes it to where this will be a, the project will be approved without him having to come back to us to ask for a variance, correct? Absolutely. You're exactly right. Okay. Just clarifying. Question. Question has been called. All in favor, it will be a voice vote. Michael, you're the first picture on. Yes. Amber. Yes. Rodney. Yes. John Cole. Yes. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what I, what I understand is that John will do 24 hours of community service helping us rewrite some of our ordinances. Uh, actually, I would be happy to uh, help with that. I really would, Mike. I really would. Excuse me. Uh, Alderman Hogan. <laughs> you can tell them, like we all do. Your Honor, is there a time frame on that community service? 
<laughs> no, I, I would be very happy to do that. I really would. And and I don't live in the city limits, but, uh, you know, we're here to stay. Uh, we're very happy to be a part of the Salado community. I wish I would I should have stated that at the very beginning. So we're very excited about this uh, and our relationship with the community. So whatever we can do to help the community, uh, you know, we will be there. And we appreciate you, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you. That was a good job, by the way. Thank you very much. Okay, let us go on now for the citizens' communication. John, we have never done this before. So if you correct me if I am wrong, if you are watching this on a laptop or a tabletop and your speakers are working and you can see up, and they'll pick you up when you talk, that will be fine. If you have to call in, it will call. It will come in on our computers that we have here. So either call or talk. Now, when you talk, your name and your address, please. And remember, three minutes, and we will not respond to anything that you're saying. First one is from Jason Howard. To everyone, Jason. No, Mayor. Just all you need to say is, if anybody has any comments, this is the time to comment. Does anybody have a public comment they would like to make? Does anybody have a public comment that they would like to make? You're not hearing. Does anyone have a public comment they would like to make? I'll ask for the third and final time. Does anyone have a public comment they would like to make? I do not hear of any of them. So we'll go on to the consent agenda. There are two. A. Approval of minutes of the regular board of alderman meeting of May 7th, 2020. And B, approval of April 2020 financial statements for the village of Salado. If there are no corrections, I will entertain a motion, please. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. John Cole. Well, discussion. Question. Question has been called. Since you were the last one we talked or asked last time, we'll start with you. Yay, uh, yes or no? Yes. Amber? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Michael. Yes. Consent agenda is approved. Number three. Presentation. We have a presentation to make the annual payment from the village of Salado to the Salado Volunteer Fire Department. Wayne, are you there? Wayne is here. I saw him on the screen a few minutes ago. Shane? I'm here. Hey, Shane. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. How's business? Busy, busy. Yes, sir. How many, how many calls have you made? I know you don't have these on your notes in front of you. But how many calls have you made? Uh, last month, we did about 70 calls. We uh we were down a little bit, but it still stayed up with everything going on. Oh, that's very good. Can you see this check we're about to give you? <laughs> yes. Good. Here it is. Paid to the order of Salado Volunteer Fire Department. 
$50,000 and no cents. Awesome. And it was given with our appreciation of all that you have done to keep us safe, well, and everything else that goes with 